Emily Fazzino, a 32-year-old mother of three, was found lifeless in a bathtub in the home in Boone she shared with her husband, Alex Fazzino. That, that was 2012. Four years later, Alex Fazzino was tried for murder, and tonight he is a free man, not guilty. For the first time, and only on Local 5 News, Alex Fazzino speaks out about the finger-pointing and false accusations he says he endured. Local 5's Claire Bramer has an in-depth look at what it's like to go on trial for a crime he didn't commit. Alex Fazzino has only been back to Iowa once since that 2016 jury verdict. That is, until he came to talk with us. There's no normal ever since Emily passed. Um, you know, it's just routine taking care of the kids and going to work. He's been a single father of three for more than five years, but what happened on January 29, 2012 has never left him. While he was in the basement watching a movie with their kids, his 32-year-old wife, Emily, was drowning in the upstairs bathtub of their home in Boone. Alex found her and dialed 911. We have paramedics. We're going to get paramedics and everybody on the way. All right. She's dead. Okay. It's very hard to describe. It, it, it was surreal. But as we all know, things became more surreal when a knock came on Alex's door in April of 2013. What was it like when you were first charged with her murder? It was uh, shocking. I told my kids I'd be gone for 15 minutes. Uh, I needed to go exchange something for my middle son, and uh, I didn't come back for, for three weeks. And, you know, I was ripped from them and it was, uh, it was excruciating. And so began the next three years of a downward spiral. It didn't seem possible that, that I could be convicted of a crime that didn't happen. Alex's murder trial was continually delayed. The fifth and final time came in February of 2015 because their daughter Coco was diagnosed with leukemia. Hi, baby girl, I love you. Nice. At that point, you're thinking, I already lost my wife and I could lose my little girl, who I'm assuming reminds you of Emily. And oh, in so many ways, she reminds me of Emily. And uh, we spent nine months, almost nearly nine months straight in the hospital. Finally, on February 22nd, 2016, in Winnesheet County, 190 miles from Boone, it was time for Alex to stand trial for Emily's murder. I mean, you had to literally relive all of these things that happened. I mean, it feels exactly how anybody out there watching would imagine reliving the worst moment of their life. Paramedics and everybody on the way, okay? All right. She's dead. You know, over and over again, it was just... She's purple. It was awful. Alex says the prosecution painted a picture of jealousy and control, but in the second week, Bill Cutmus and Trevor Hook, Fazzino's defense lawyers, portrayed another side of Emily. Uh, Emily was dragged through the mud by her own words, read by her own doctors. Why, why, why does it matter? What did you do today? What? I said, what did you do today? And you tried to get her help. You've always stuck to that. Oh, yeah, absolutely I did. Um, but her parents would, they would make me feel as if I was trying to embarrass her by getting her to go to rehab. Two and a half weeks later on March 9th, after less than a day of jury deliberation, the verdict was in and the courtroom was full. It was either you were going to walk out a free man or you were never, ever going to walk free again. That's true. Um, but I never really considered the latter. Looking back, his attorneys, Cutmus and Hook, both remembered the tension in the room. You never know, even though we felt good about the case, but, you know, a jury can do what it wants. And there's an old adage that if they won't look your the defendant, they won't look at the defendant. That's usually not a good sign. That adage is usually a foreshadow of a guilty verdict. But then the jury foreman did something unusual. You can see me turn to Alex and say, he smiled. You know, you never know to hear the words, but I was eerily confident at that point. We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. <laughs> Nation on one side and anger on the other. Thank God there was a, a impartial jury that could evaluate the facts 
and see the truth. Alex Vizina walked down to that decor courtroom just as easily as we walked down the street together one year later. But some things aren't coming as easy. Have you forgiven people? Not yet. I, he was right, maybe in time, but I, I mean, it's, I, I'm not there yet. As for Emily's family, the Beckwiths, the owners of Fairway Grocery Stores, we tried reaching them for comment. We knocked on their door, left messages, and sent requests, but not one was answered. But those purple ribbons still wrap the trees in Boone, Emily's hometown. They've been that way since the trial began, symbolizing hopeful justice for Emily. For sure, since the trial, there's been no contact whatsoever while Coco is in the hospital, uh, not so much as a card. How is Coco, by the way? Coco's fantastic. She's... Uh, in Kansas City, she's the Leukemia Lymphoma Society Girl of the Year. The dancing little girl you see here in the hallway is now cancer-free and happy. But she and her brothers, Ricky and Nikki, still ask about their mom. I, I would give anything in the world right now to have Emily back. Anything. Problems and all. Anything. And I feel like she was taken from me. That past isn't all really in the past, since it's only been one year. Those people who say, or who think, well, he got away with murder. It's, it's, it's hard to swallow that people can think that. Alex says it's going to take a long time for normal to feel normal. Losing his wife, being accused of her murder, being shut out of a family that once gave him everything, the overwhelming debt that's come with defending his innocence. The one thing he says has remained a constant through the whirlwind his life has become. No one should have to go through that. And it was just a terribly, it was terribly unfair to, to put my, you know, our kids through that, to put my parents through that and, and, and me, you know, it was a hard time and all for what? All for what? That's a great question. All for what? Claire Bramer, Local 5 News. We are Iowa. Now, Alex Fazzino is raising his family in Lee's Summit, Missouri, a suburb of Kansas City. Once again, we did reach out to the Beckwith family, and we did not hear back. To find our full trial coverage of the Fazzino case, you can visit our website, weareiowa.com.